what has happened with the four or five month delay, we've now seen an uptick in demand, passenger demand by significant percentages, not as much as it was prior to the, to the pandemic. But we're now running at about 50%, maybe a bit more of where we were, 60%, and it's growing every day. And cargo is very strong and has been since the pandemic started. Um, so yes, it's a, it's a good story at the moment. We're looking forward to the next uh, four or five months of, of good business. What about business class? How strongly is that rebounding? And, and how, where's the differentiation between leisure and sort of Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, when you talk about business class, it's a little bit of a misnomer. It's a premium offering, uh, put aside premium economy. And our mix, our segmentation includes the corporate business, the business business, you would understand it, a lot of high-end leisure, visiting friends and relatives, uh, baby boomers, whatever. That, that mix has returned with some, some degree of uh, robustness, let's say. Uh, and our business class cabins are pretty full on everything we're doing at the moment, including the 380. So contrary to the view that in, the, in this time last year that business was going to be a change out, there would be diminished business class demand. On the contrary, it's gone the other way, okay. as we thought it would. U.S. consumer prices, I mean, the data keeps coming in and we're now moving at the fastest rate up since 1990 on an annualized basis. The inflationary pressure is building in many parts of the world. I'm wondering to what extent that's become a day-to-day -day conversation at Emirates and how it could affect the airline. Well, the global economy is facing spikes in the uh, inflationary level simply because of supply chain problems, labor market distortions. And you see that in all parts of the world. This is a short-term thing for me. I would say that by the summer of next year, the end of next year, you'll get an equilibrium again and you'll see that spike fall away. We just have to deal with the problem. It's not so much about what the prices are going to be, it's actually getting the resource that we need, irrespective of the price, would you believe, just to get the network restored and the aircraft flying. So we have to deal with this and we will deal with this. Um, and uh, as I said, I think it's a short-term thing. This has been a thunderbolt to the, to the uh, global economy. And when you get things like that, it takes time to sort itself out as it will. Let's talk about the 777 plane. It's already set to be two and a half years late. Uh, are you convinced that it's actually going to come through? Look, it's anybody's guess. Um, it's, uh, well, it, it should have been delivered to us in June 20. It, should, it may be delivered to us in 24. So we're, we're talking three plus years and we're not altogether sure that they're out of the woods yet, but eventually it'll come into Emirates. Quite when, I'm not sure. Have you received enough reassurances then from Boeing? Do you think it, it, it's an issue with certification or is it an issue with demand? I think it's a question of the external um, input the agencies that are involved around the build, the certification of the aircraft that Boeing have got to make their peace with. It's nothing to do with, with the airline community or demand for the aircraft will, will always be uh, a very, very good aircraft for those airlines that choose to use it. It's just a question of getting, out, getting it out and into service. And there are issues still out there which Boeing have got to resolve.